Phobia. Excuse me? Do you even know what that stuff in that can is? Yeah, it says right here. Killy Chilly Willy. No more penguins. Well, do you know how to use it? Uh, point and shoot, I guess. Do you know what it could do to you? Make me look like an action hero while I clean up my house? Yeah, why don't you give that to me for a second? We need to talk. Hey! My awesome spray! Yeah! My bathroom! Am I having an existential crisis here? Calm down. We just need to have a chat about pesticides. Pesterbrides? No, pesticides. They're any chemical intended to prevent, repel, lessen, or destroy pests. Right. Pests. Meaning tiny penguins. Well, in this case, sure. But pests aren't just penguins. Pests are any unwanted organism. Pests can spread disease, compete for resources with other organisms, cause property and crop damage, or just gross us out. Like micro-penguins. You know it, tiger. Basically, a pest is an organism we don't want around for one reason or another. These can be insects, rodents, weeds, mildew, or even bacteria. It's not just good to get rid of pests that bother us in the house. Sometimes pests can pose a major health risk to us. Hey, David! Oh, we back to me now. What animal would you guess is responsible for the most human deaths every year? Penguins! Oh, be serious. Uh, I don't know. Sharks? Sure. Some people are afraid of them, but sharks only kill a few people a year. Gee, how about a cow? You're getting closer. Cows kill a couple dozen people a year. Whoa. Really? Uh, panda. This isn't fun anymore. It's the mosquito. Mosquitoes can kill and make millions of people very ill every year. What? How could a tiny thing like that off so many people? Well, mosquitoes can carry diseases like malaria, dengue fever, encephalitis, West Nile virus, and yellow fever, to name a few. Many of these diseases can lead to death, if untreated. Oh my gosh! Well, now's the time for pesticides! In this case, sure, they could be helpful. In fact, the use of pesticides against health threats like mosquitoes has likely saved millions more lives than mosquitoes take every year. Take that, you abominable arthropod! But it's not just sprays. Pesticides can be found as baits, powders, collars, disinfectants, like bleach, mold, and mildew sprays, weed killers, swimming pool chemicals, larger animal repellents. All of these pesticides you could probably find on a normal day of shopping. Sir, do you have a bonus card? No, thank you. Would you like to apply for one? I just need your email, social security code, and genetic fingerprint. What's wrong with you people? So David, how do you think that spray you're planning on using works? I don't know, it just goes like... <laughs> and the penguins are all like... Ah! And then I can watch TV without the living room smelling like fish. Not quite. Sorry, friend. Why should I care? This stuff only works on penguins anyway. That's where a lot of people would be surprised. Some pesticides only affect their target species, but many more cause similar reactions in all organisms. This means it's critical to understand what's going on inside that bottle. Here, look at this. Oh, cool. It's a science thing. That's a chemical called chlorpyrifos. It's a common ingredient in many pesticides. So what does it do besides scare kids in chemistry class? Well, let's look at this chemical at work. These are hormone caterpillars. They cause major crop damage to tomato and tobacco plants across the United States every year. That's okay. Tomatoes are for hippies. That statement explains so much about you. Anyway, if we spray this field with chlorpyrifos, the chemical will coat the leaves these caterpillars are eating. Ah, a nice light vinaigrette. Sure, except this salad dressing packs a bit more of a kick. When the caterpillars eat chlorpyrifos, the chemical blocks the ability for their nerves to switch off. A simple signal from the brain to make a muscle flex turns into a signal that can't be shut off. 
Essentially, these animals can't turn their nerves off and the signals become nonsense. This will cause their nervous systems to eventually fail and they die. Well, that's awesome. Now all the caterpillars are gone so we can get more food. Sure, but there is a problem. Many pesticides like chlorpyrifos do their job so well that they can have the same effects on other organisms, even humans. Okay, so I won't lick it. No big deal. You don't always have to lick it. Some pesticides can get into our body from being ingested or eaten, but others can be inhaled or even touched. In fact, chlorpyrifos is moderately toxic to humans and can be absorbed through our skin. Skin, you say? What theoretically could happen if a human maybe kinda sorta touches chlorpyrifos? Well, the effect of chemical exposure depends on one, how toxic the chemical is, two, how much exposure you've had, and three, how you were exposed to the chemical. In the case of chlorpyrifos, it has the same effect in the human body as it does in an insect's body. Depending on how severe the exposure, you can exhibit watery eyes, Blah. drooling, Blah. coughing, Blah. stomach pain, Blah. vomiting, Blah. or diarrhea. In uh -oh. severe uh -oh. cases, uh -oh. you can experience uh -oh. tremors and muscle spasms, paralysis, seizures, or even comas. All of this depends on the kind of pesticide you've been exposed to and your level of exposure. Each kind of pesticide comes with its own properties and potential health risks. Remember, constant exposure to a mild pesticide could be a greater risk to you than a small dose of a highly toxic pesticide. Meaning, you could touch a very toxic pesticide accidentally one time, and your health risk may not be as great as someone who is in a field spraying a more mild pesticide every day. Ugh, okay, don't lick, touch, or breathe too close to the leaves. No problem. But you were going to eat the tomato. Right? Well, I'm not going to eat them. Okay, someone will potentially eat that tomato, and it's been covered with pesticide. Apples, pears, grapes, strawberries, lettuce, and many other foods could still be covered with pesticides when you pick them up in the grocery store. All the more reason to stick to potato chips and bacon. Yeah, because that doesn't come with any health risks. The easiest way to avoid pesticides on your food is to make sure you thoroughly rinse your produce before eating anything. Good to see you're taking a moderate approach to this, David. Hey, did you see what happened to me in the last scene? No chances. I was so sick, I turned blue. Uh, well, you're always, yeah, I, I, I guess I won't get into that now. Let's not forget, though. Pesticides aren't just sprayed on fields. There are plenty in your own home. We need to practice safety here, too. Hey, I do all right. Look, all my pesticides are on the same shelf. And they're out of reach of the children. I don't have. That's a start, but it is huh. critical to always follow the exact instructions on the bottle. Sure, everything's on this label up until it says caution. Who's ever needed that part? If you come in contact with a pesticide, follow the label's instructions. Different pesticides will require different treatments. If you think someone has been poisoned, contact the Poison Control Center at 800-222-1222. And lastly, always make sure pesticides are in their original containers. Never transfer them to some other container. Oh, we probably don't need to talk about uh, this one then. <laughs> so with responsible use, pesticides can help us control the spread of disease, protect our native environment and property, and get rid of nasty things in our house. Pesticides are pretty great, huh? Well, yes and no. Ugh, is anything simple with you? Hear me out. So pesticides can be very effective against certain pests, but you will never kill all of them. Well, sure, but that's just two of them. Okay, but why do you think they survived? I don't know, they go to yoga every night? They survived because there was a variation in this population of caterpillars. These caterpillars possess some trait that allows them to survive better than others. This trait that makes them immune to the pesticide can be likely passed on to their offspring. So that means their babies will be... <gasps> Super Ultra Mega Caterpillars! Well, we're likely to survive the spray, yes. So, that means... We need more spray! More toxic spray! Get them! Unfortunately, yes. This is called the pesticide treadmill. As pests become immune, we have to use more and deadlier pesticide. In the 1950s, pests destroyed about 7% of crops grown in the United States. Today, pests devour closer to 13% of U.S. crops. Wait, that's not very convincing math. Not really, no. Let's also not forget that pesticides don't just impact the target species, but anything they come in contact with. What's below you in the ground right now? Uh, dinosaurs. I mean, maybe. But 
How about earthworms? Earthworms create tunnels through the soil, which introduce water and air to the soil. This is critical to the health of a field. However, the pesticide will kill the earthworms too. Well, that doesn't make me very sad. They don't even have faces. Well, it should make you sad, you speciesist. I basically just told you the worms help your food grow. It's not just worms, though. Birds and other natural predators can be killed by the pesticides. Well, that just sounds like we're going to need even more pesticides. Yep. Without the predators to help, there will be even more pests that need to be taken care of. Even with all this pesticide, only a small amount of the pesticide actually reaches the pests, meaning most of it covers the plants in the ground. When the rains come, it will wash the majority of the pesticides into the rivers and streams, where it could eventually get in contact with us. This stuff can get everywhere! Much as I hate to admit it, I'm not sure I want to go around my house spraying pesticides anymore. What else can I do? Well, in your house, pests are like us. They need food and water to survive. So if you make sure that all your food is secured and put away, there's no reason for them to show up. You also want to eliminate any puddles or leaky faucets, so pests can't get a drink or lay their eggs in the water. Biological controls are also becoming very popular ways to control pests that typically target only the pest itself. Yeah, biological controls. Yep. What? Biological controls use naturally occurring chemicals. These often target specific organisms and occur naturally in the environment. Many insects communicate and attract each other using chemicals called pheromones. Some traps use these pheromones to attract only one kind of insect. You can also plant cedar trees or use cedar chips in your garden. The chemicals produced by these trees naturally repel many pests. You can also go the non-chemical route. Encourage predators to take up residence in your yard. Birds and bats will eat thousands of pests during the day and night. Predatory bugs like lacewings, ladybugs, mantids, dragonflies, and centipedes can target specific pests and can be ordered commercially for release in your yard. Certain viruses or molds will only kill one species of pest. They can be applied similarly to more traditional pesticides. So David, I think you learned a lot here. What do you think you're going to do about your penguin problem? I think I'm going to follow your advice and try a chemical-free strategy. Oh, which is it?